right, guys, um, I'm going to jump in. Um, just bear in mind, I think there's like a 10 second delay from audio, um, but I'm pretty sure chat's live. So I'll keep an eye on chat. Um, that's why I kind of wanted to do this to give you guys an opportunity to ask questions while I'm doing this. Kind of like, uh, uh, you know, a user group kind of, but, you know, where you can just tag along and watch. Um, this will be up available to on my uh site too after this it's just going to get transcoded and then i might um clean it up so uh whoever's here thanks for coming along um so this is going to be a live flame tutorial on uh sky replacement techniques um inside of flame now i did i did a sky replacement video a long time ago and um you know a lot's changed since then and it wasn't the most thorough kind of look at it Okay, volume's low. Okay, let me let me try and uh, amp it up. Hang on one sec. All right, I just um, tweaked audio. I pumped it up a little. Is that a bit better? Okay, sorry about that, guys. First, um, first live stream, growing pains. All right, so yeah, the the first time that this was um, a sky replacement tutorial, it wasn't the most thorough. Um, it was a lot more generic, I guess is the word. Um, whereas this is more of um, a trick that I use a lot, and um, you know, uh, in keeping with the theme lately of uh, real world flame, I think this really applies. And um, for me, the stuff that's worth sharing is stuff that saves your ass when you're in a pinch so this is going to be on um even though i don't know why you'd want to get rid of this nice guy um it's going to be swapping it out with this guy and you know this will happen all the time in uh you know in production is we'll something will be shot and we'll um have to make it work and fix it so just to start off with um this is shot with um uh, a black magic uh ursa mini 4k um and uh, after this is up and the video is transcoded of this live thing, I'm going to upload this to uh, my site too. So you guys will be able to, if anyone does want to play along um, after the fact, you can uh, you know, have access to the footage too. So this is the shot playing back. It's, you know, it's not the craziest, you know, camera move or anything, but I mean, there is enough to kind of warrant a bit of a, a bit of a pain usually for sky replacements because we've got, got the cloud here. We've got the variation down here. We've got this kind of soft, um, out of focus stuff here, which is really not that fun, especially when you have to, yeah, it's just not, it's not fun no matter what you do and you start keying that stuff. So that's something, um, that's going to be interesting to, to say the least. Um, but that's why we're doing this. So, again, I'm just going to open that up and then just do effects, create batch effects. And I'm just going to control swipe to the left and just pull over our background image. And this is just an image taken in, I think it was in Vancouver a while ago. Um, but yeah, so just make sure filtering's off. Yeah, so we're going to use some of this sky. And I'm going to show you kind of um, how I'd approach this um, if, I, if I was doing this. So. I'm not going to bother with my little box, even though actually I may as well because habits, right? And I always make it red. Okay, so again, um, first thing that I usually do with something like this is I would track, um, I would track my environment first, just because it's you know get things done to start with. And then the other thing to note too is if we scrub through this, we'll see. And this will be easier once you guys have access to it. But we're actually, the clouds were actually moving pretty quick that day. So as I'm scrubbing, you might not be able to pick up on it. But those clouds are moving. So those are kind of false positives for trackers. So for this, I'm going to kind of maybe track this area over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go and pull out an action and shift drop him in. And going to look at the result and I'm just going to pull out a G mask, press F4 and I'm going to track this portion here. So I'm just going to draw out here. Actually, it's worth noting too. You can just back click uh, 
Is it here? Yeah, and you can do all your stuff here. You can do objects, gmask. We got that being able to be added. But yeah, I still prefer from here, just so you guys know. Um, but yeah, if we um, look at that and do F8 and then go object tracking and go to planar, I'm just going to take off skew and just keep it with rotation and scale. And I'm going to go snap. And you see it's popped up a reference. I'm going to go analyze forward. And it's going to chug through. Um, keep in mind, I'm streaming and this is 4K. So, I mean, it's not doing too bad. But yeah, again, you guys will have access so you'll be able to feel the pain if you decide to play along. So again, this isn't... Um, a massive surprise that this is tracking fine because it's you know it's not the worst shot thing in the world for this particular scenario um, okay so I'm gonna track backwards I'm gonna go go to ref go backwards snap just to reload the uh, the reference and then go analyze backward I'm gonna let it do its thing To be honest, this is something that's worth uh, worth worth looking at. I'm going to do one too, like um, on the motion vectors, because you know it's worth just seeing how long things take. Um, again, this machine streaming and all that, but you know, some some things, no matter what, just will just kind of chug along. So I'm going to let it keep going, keep tracking backwards. All right, so there's our there's our shape, and it's looking pretty locked. Um, let's just quickly just gonna hide that, and let's just chuck. I like doing this just to test. I'm just gonna Alt Shift to reverse parent that, and I'm just going to go Object, size it up, and then move him over just there. Just. I just like doing this. I just like pressing play, seeing just in situ text, just to see, make sure my track's going all right, make sure nothing's jumping. It's just a nice kind of fail safe that I usually use. And yes, the track's working good. So I'm going to, actually I'm gonna leave this where it is and I'm gonna show you why I wouldn't wanna do this the normal way. And the normal way is in fact, um, you know, what you'd expect. So if I go and pull out a mux, Chuck these here. And let's do a key. Okay, so, you know, let's see. Somewhere, and again, this isn't the worst. And we're actually lucky this is, um, this is shot um, uh, DNG. So uh, there's actually a lot of color info, and it was converted to DPX. So this, um, on other cameras, would not be as nice so that's one thing where this is actually not the worst thing in the world so now if I just sampled it <clears throat> I just sampled in there and it was just control dragging if I pull net <coughs> excuse me if I go to home that up to 100% and I pull this forward and backward on the proportional scale and we can see just kind of find that sweet spot for F1, F4, just for where <clears throat> that starts to, again, just like you would with the real key, just to where it feels like it's working without ruining and creating too harsh edge. And that's it's feeling all right. So again, let's, um, let's put this guy in. Uh, I'm going to control N and drop this background in. And just going to uh, alt shift just to reverse parent that and press F4 and I'm just going to scale it up just turn down transparency a bit and rotate and just blow it up and obviously this I, I shot it 
two different, completely different times of day, but you know, that's how it is. I might flip this over to see if that helps, even though there's not a super strong light source. And the light was, uh, I guess it, yeah, I mean, lighting's a bit whack anyway, but you know, you get the, you get the gist. So there's our eye tracked in. And um, let's, uh, let's add the bits that we usually would to help make this. So let's go to uh, motion blur. Turn on samples to four, and let's go 15, and say 0.33 maybe. Oops, 0.33. And if we toggle those on and off, it's not really making a difference. I mean, there's not a massive amount of motion, but anyway. So, let's try a quick, uh, quick comp of that and see how that goes. So. Grab the untouched source, and make that the front, make this the back, and this the mat. And, you know, it's actually not, it's not the worst thing, you know, if we press play. Okay, so, again, this is part of why I usually hate sky replacements, and I always, whenever I see this part, I cringe personally because it is always problematic in that particular way. But um, that's what this uh, whole thing is all about. It's, it's using um, our good friend Min and um, playing with blend mode. So uh, first thing, I'm going to turn off uh, motion blur. And I'm just going to jump to the frame that I enabled that. That was my bad. Because I don't feel like it's adding enough to warrant it being on. But it does need to be on, I think. So, uh, color and actually color management, uh, custom add, and we'll do gamma, and I'll do remove sRGB encoding. And again, there's our nice, our nice guy. And again, let's let's blur it up. We'll duplicate that. And invert. And if I look at spacebar one, I can actually see this. So just get a reference of the blur. Oh man, there's some heavy JPEGing on that. Okay, so so we know that if we go spacebar one, we can say blur it, say five pick oh not thirty-five. Let's just pull it up and I don't know, somewhere somewhere kind of there will work just again this is just for kind of seeing how it's going in it uh, the other thing we don't want those mountain backgrounds in there so it's gonna do a bit of that tidy that up it's already feeling better so now the obvious elephant in the room is these edges and this noise just look not good and no amount of edge blur and edge kissing is going to help you um you know i got this stuff here that then we'd have to pull a separate key for and you know it just gets really problematic really quick um and again like i i just i hate the amount of screwing around that goes into this um that, ha that can go into this because yeah sky replacements can be really 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 not fun so um, yeah, so the other option, um, which is the option I always try first, um, because it always gives a better result, is um, the uh, min darken. So I'm going to do comp. So my front is going to be my foreground untouched. My back is going to be the tracked background footage. And then the mat is going to be the source footage. And to the source footage, I'm going to add a color corrector just before. And if I just do that and then if I set this to min darken, min darken is what I want. Um, not max lighten, but min darken. So min darken is, this trick has been around for a long time. There's many different ways you can approach this. Um, I like doing min out in comp um, and not in action from memory. It doesn't behave exactly the same. Um, yeah, I don't think it does. Um, I may be wrong, um, but from, from my memory, I don't think it does. But yeah, so whoop-de-doo right now right what's 
what's the, the where's the value in this right now? And that um, comes once we start tweaking this guy, which is going to be like our, our mat driver for this, which is really going to do magic. So I'm going to, I'm just going to, the other thing to note too is if we just did, um, if we made the mat, the mat that we pulled for these two, um, I'll jump over here. And I go view result and then you know, seeing the min darken, the difference we have between these two is okay. I mean, we're not having to worry about that stuff, which is which is cool, which is valid, you know, because that would be a pain. Um, but other than that, um, just toggling between these two, they're not, you know, they're not really that big a difference to make you go well. So that's one thing to note, you know, because that is a, a valid way you can get good results sometimes, more when you have trees or something that has something completely blown out um, going on in there. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is just uh, just stick this in. Actually, I'll do it after the, uh, the linear. And I'm going to go to spacebar one. And I just want to pull down saturation just a little. So now it's more... It's closer to, yeah, it's closer to what was in the source just for saturation. So the next thing is, um, yeah, let's build this in the way that I would to get this to be our best friend. So viewing this guy, I'm just going to minus click and go to context two. And if we double click on the color corrector and press spacebar two to view it in context, uh, the key is let's let's see which bits we need to pull up. So if I go to Alt three, and then in this one I'm just going to do scopes show. Yeah. So um, really, we know that uh, this stuff here that's living down here. If I just um, Alt spacebar, we can see that this is where um, you know this is our our shadow kind of stuff that's going on you know this is a severely weirdly exposed shot just because i was messing around but you know each shot's gonna be different but you usually will get this with sky stuff so we know that we need to pull up the um the the kind of low just before not even near the mids but the low end so let's let's approach that so i'm gonna just scale those down i'm gonna so good having scopes and again i'm gonna do spacebar two and then double click on my color corrector and go into the curves. And I'm gonna add in a couple points onto this curve. So I'm gonna spread spacebar M, just go into move mode, and I'm just gonna pull up on this luminance curve, and you can see what we're already kind of able to introduce just by doing that. And now if we go to this source here, to this guy here, you see it is night and day, and all of these areas. I mean, the the thing that does happen with this is we do we do lose a bit, uh, a little bit of detail around trees, but it's a uniform amount of detail that passes through. And the the beauty of this is there is zero. I'm talking zero zero need for for edges and 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 blur and. It's just like an instant, like that compared to that. And I know, I know that, um, you know, we've got bits that maybe might not, shouldn't be going through, but what, what gets put through is so minute and so perfect. It's like, it's amazing. So, I mean, yes, this is kind of weird what's going on there. And then the other thing you would do with this is if we look at here to here, there's always going to be bits that will bleed back um, with what you don't want to do. So in that case, I'm just going to throw these away and just throw that there. And that's going to be my output. But I'm going to chuck another mux down here. I mean, you have to agree that is so much better than the amount of work you'd have to do to get that to work. And again, like uh, if we did uh, put in some, uh, I'm just going to do output mat. And then I'm going to go to all nodes and then R for regrain. And might actually do that to the source so I can get a sample. Let's do that. And there we go. 
and you can see with that in there yeah like uh once you guys get access to this footage and play around you'll you'll see how how much of a, a lifesaver this can actually be to be honest so um let's address what we do um for the bits that aren't supposed to do that so specifically you know bits like this say like you know just little here so again it would just be filling in um like you're like you're used to with other things so we've already we've already got a good track before so i'm going to go copy and go back out here and add a gmask tracer so front don't need that and i'm just going to paste and then with that selected pull out a gmask and i'm just going to pull that out and just soften that out and you know Again, it's not tracked to him, so I might just have to add a couple, a couple little keyframes as it goes off. I mean, that's going to be good enough. And again, I'm just going to do comp, so front, back, and mat. And you see, it's just covered in that little bit. And that's how it works with the rest of this. If you if you run into trouble with other parts here that you don't like say like say you you really feel like that that por portion there should have you know a bit there you could always just fill in that, that little bit with roto and just kiss that little bit in now the other thing to note is you could always um if i do key again and go key 3d whoops to the source if we try and pull another key um you know you could always do the the pixel spread route, right? But 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 you still don't get the same niceness as you would. So I mean, here we go. Here's again the front back mat. It's not horrible. It's not horrible, but it's not. Again, it just feels like a key, and this just blends so much nicer by default using the um, the min darken. So um, the thing you could do too, and again, it depends on your shot, but you could do pixel spread and then mat, and we'll view that. Space bar three, and again, you could always do the the parallax or the stretch, stretch it out, play with the edges, and then play with your key and and whatnot. But again, like you're introducing stuff that wasn't there with that route. But again, it's it all depends on the shot, which I'm sure you guys know. So, um, so that's yeah, that's one way to do it. But yeah, um, this min dark and in, in this particular scenario where there is high contrast where there is motion like you know shallow depth of field and motion blur this guy just you know there is some kind of weird stuff here and you, again you'll have to you know for this example right here i'm just going to show you what i do i just quickly pull out another g mask just for that part um, look here and again it's just that bit go back to the g mask and go into draw shape and you know for this part that's where you could just do this blur that off go to object and just blur that guy off and again if i viewed that in spacebar one so i go alt 2 and f1 on the left view and then just go into my video display control current display port and if i did specifically for this guy the space part two and then pull up the left bit sorry space bar one that's why it wasn't updating space bar one and yeah now you can see how just kissing that in is again it's choosing the bits that that are a worry and you can get away with so that's going to be that's going to be it for this one guys um it's a really simple technique that's been around for a while but um you know the the way you you extract from it is always is always interesting and um yeah that's going to be that's going to be it for this one guys um did you guys have any questions or and keep in mind um you guys are going to have access to this uh, footage too. So you'll be able to see this and play with this for yourself if you want.
Okay, well, um, if no one's, uh, I'll give it one more second because there's a delay, but if no one's got any questions, um, I might call this one a day and then um, I'll give you guys a bit more notice on my next one um, for the next one I do live. All right, um, I'm going to peace out. So, yeah, till next time, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, this will be processing, and you can uh, watch it back later as well. So keep an eye out for my website to have a updated uh, name of this and a link or whatever. But, yeah, uh, cheers for watching, guys.